It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International with Dr. E.K.D. Quick. With your Bible in hand and your heart open to learn, let's join the teaching in progress. From the Old Testament, we are teaching today on a series on introduction to the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, just as the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. The Old Testament is the implicit of the New Testament, just as the New Testament is the explicit of the Old Testament. The Old Testament enfolds the New Testament, just as the New Testament unfolds the Old Testament. In this teaching, we will gain a comprehensive walkthrough of the entire Old Testament. The Old Testament contains books of the law, books of wisdom, books of history, books of poetry, all inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament contains both writing prophets and oral prophets, major prophets and minor prophets. This simply means that some books are larger than others, therefore called major prophets, while maintaining that each prophetical book is just as important and inspired as its counterpart. Furthermore, we must always remember that the scriptures are not just history, but his story. And as a result, Jesus Christ is found in every book of the Bible, in every chapter, in every verse. Jesus stated in Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 45, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning me. Moreover, it is important to always remember that both testaments are necessary for accurate doctrinal interpretation. A biblical principle is doctrinally sound as it is substantiated by both testaments and undergirded with co-testament scripture. The books of the Bible are outlined in many different ways in different teachings. For the purpose of this teaching, we are going to simplify it by first stating the major prophets and the minor prophets. The major prophets are Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, which includes his writings called the Book of Lamentations, and the book of Daniel. These are five major prophets total. Then we have the minor prophets, just as important but less in content in their writings. This includes Obadiah, Joel, Jonah, Amos, Hosea, Micah, Nahum, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. This includes 12 minor prophets. The Bible also has distinguished writing prophets and oral prophets, with a combination of some prophets doing both writing and having oral prophecies. The writing prophets are outlined as follows, Obadiah, Joel, Jonah, Amos, Hosea, Isaiah, Micah, Nahum, and Zephaniah. These individuals all wrote during the time of the Assyrian Empire from 883 to 609 BC approximately. Jeremiah, Habakkuk, and Daniel, writing prophets also, wrote during the time of the Babylonian captivity, approximately 625 to 539 BCE. 
Ezekiel, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi wrote during the Persian captivity and the Persian Empire, approximately 539 to 330 BC. The oral prophets, there are many, but the so-called oral prophets are distinguished by five major oral prophets, Samuel, Nathan, Abijah, Elijah, and Elisha. Samuel, who founded the school of the prophets. Nathan was the advisor to King David. Abijah was the advisor to King Jeroboam. Elijah and Elisha both led a fight against the worship of Baal. The books of the Bible are also outlined according to a section called the law. These are the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all written by Moses. The historical books are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Esther and Nehemiah, and the books of poetry, Song of Solomon, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the book of Psalms, and the book of Job. This is the teaching on introduction to the Old Testament. Part 2, the book of First Chronicles, compiled mostly by Isaiah and Ezra. The book of First Chronicles, key verse, is First Chronicles chapter 14, verse 2. And David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel, for his kingdom was lifted up on high because of his people Israel. The book of First Chronicles speaks to the annals of the days, genealogies, and these genealogies are important for they prove not only that God is archiving the importance of the nation of Israel's heritage and the linkage of the past, but also outlines his love for each individual as he personally accounts for each individual. The book of First Chronicles also speaks to the history of David, his armies, his wars, the ark and temple preparation, and has a brief account of King Saul. The book of Second Chronicles, written and compiled primarily by Isaiah and Ezra, the key verse in the book of 2 Chronicles is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The book of 2 Chronicles speaks to the divine history of the kings from the time of Solomon in chapters 1 through 9, and then afterwards the divine history continues in chapters 10 through 36. The book of 1 Kings and 2 Kings is written from man's vantage point while the books of First Chronicles and Second Chronicles is written from God's vantage point. The book of First Samuel and Second Samuel parallel in some aspects the book of First Chronicles. The book of First Kings and Second Kings in some points parallels the book of Second Chronicles. The book of Ezra, written by Ezra the scribe, approximately 457 to 444 B.C. The key verse in the book of Ezra is Ezra chapter 6, verses 21 through 22. 
and the children of Israel, which were come again out of the captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land, to seek the Lord God of Israel, did eat. And kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful, and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them, to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Here in the book of Ezra, it speaks the history of 70 years after the books of Chronicles. It speaks to the return of the Jews from the Babylonian exile and the rebuilding of the temple under Zerubbabel in chapters 1 through 6, and then the continual building led by Ezra in chapters 7 through 10. The book of Nehemiah, written by Nehemiah the prophet, approximately 424 to 400 B.C., the key verse in the book of Nehemiah is chapter 6, verse 15 through 16, which states, So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Ilu, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Here in the book of Nehemiah, it speaks to the rebuilding of the walls as outlined in chapter 1 through 7. It also speaks to Jerusalem after the exile captivity and the great revivals and reformations that came after the Bible readings of Ezra in chapter 8. These revivals and reforms are spoken of in chapters 8 through 13, briefly after the great Bible reading in Ezra chapter 8. As Nehemiah speaks of rebuilding the walls, Ezra spoke of rebuilding the temple. These have historical value as the children of Israel being in captivity to the Babylonians, to the Assyrians, did not have a temple, thus did not have the feasts, thus did not have the temple worship, did not have the reading of the law, and all the things that coincide with the worship, fellowship, and serving the Lord, reestablishing the walls, reestablishing the temple, helped them reestablish their national identity, and reestablish a relationship with the Lord. The book of Esther was compiled by Ezra the scribe. The book of Esther, written approximately 450 to 331 BC. And the key verse in the book of Esther is chapter 4, verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Here, the book of Esther speaks of the deliverance of the Jews as a nation from the wicked Haman, who had a decree a false decree to have the Jews exterminated from existence. This book of Esther also outlines God's divine sovereignty as he orchestrates this Queen Esther and Mordecai, her caregiver, to gain favor of the king and to be heard in the presence of the king and to have the plan of Haman turn against Haman himself, and the same plan that Haman had to destroy the Jews and to kill Mordecai backfired. Mordecai was risen up in trust and position and prominence with the king. Esther was risen up in providence and prominence 
with the king, and Haman was judged, and the nation of Israel was delivered. To this day, the nation of Israel celebrates this deliverance in the celebration of Purim. The book of Job, written by Moses in the second millennial B.C., The key verse in the book of Job is Job chapter 2, verse number 3, which states, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and shuns away evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause." Here, the book of Job speaks to the patience in human suffering and how and why the righteous suffer and God's restoration after suffering. Job suffered for 42 chapters as he lost his health, lost his wealth, lost his reputation. His wife rose up against him. He was all alone, suffering in pain and agony. Three so-called friends came to try and attempt and encouraging him, but instead came to mock him, to lambast him, and to judge him and say to Job in so many words that God does not do this to the righteous. Only the wicked suffer like you're suffering, Job. Something must be wrong. You must have some secret sins. Job, what's going on? So part of Job's suffering was also these false accusations. And in all this Job held on to his integrity, did not curse God. And in the end, when he prayed for those three so-called friends, God gave him double for his trouble and blessed him that his cup runneth over. The book of Psalms had many authors, but primarily written by David who wrote approximately 73 of the 150 Psalms. The book of Psalms was compiled by many authors from approximately 1410 B.C. to 450 B.C., which includes Moses and David and others. The key verse in the book of Psalms is what some call the middle verse of the Bible. Psalm 118 verse 8 It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The book of Psalms is a song book, a hymn book, a prayer book declaring the omnipotence, omniscience, providence, provision, sovereignty, and relationship of God. And the book of Psalms is also our personal devotional book. The book of Psalms has many outlines, But one simple outline has been written where Psalms 1 through Psalm 41 is written as the Genesis book, where it speaks of man in view and is in emphasis. Psalm 42 through Psalm 72 speaks of the Exodus book, where Israel is in view and is in emphasis. Psalm 73 through Psalm 89 speaks of the Leviticus book where the sanctuary is in view and is in emphasis. Psalm 90 through Psalm 106 speaks to the numbers book where the earth is in view and is in emphasis. And Psalm 107 through Psalm 150 speaks to the Deuteronomy book where The word and the praise of God is in view and is in emphasis. The book of Proverbs, written by many authors, but primarily by King Solomon, approximately 971 to 686 B.C. 
The key verse in the book of Proverbs is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, which states, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Here in the book of Proverbs, it's divine wise sayings in proverbial form. It speaks to practical living where we can take these Proverbs and apply them to our life. It is encouraged that both children and adults have daily devotionals with the book of Proverbs and, of course, the book of Psalms. The book of Proverbs is outlined as wisdom for the young in chapters 1 through 9, wisdom for all in chapters 10 through 24 and primarily wisdom for leaders in chapters 25 through 31. The book of Ecclesiastes, written by Solomon, approximately 940 to 931 B.C. The key verse in the book of Ecclesiastes is chapter 12, verse number 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Here in the book of Ecclesiastes, it speaks to an individual who showed that although he had everything that an individual could dream of, the heart's desire of any, and was not restrained from having Anything he wanted, all he wanted, when he wanted, wherever he wanted. And still, he said, vanity of vanity, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Solomon had all that he wanted, explained that throughout the book, and concluded in the last verse of the last chapter that the key is to fear the Lord and have a relationship with the Lord. Similar to the teaching of Jesus, where he said you can gain the whole world and lose your own soul. The book of Ecclesiastes speaks of vanities, worldly pursuits, vexations. Mankind can have all that he wants and still be empty without God. The Song of Solomon, written by Solomon, approximately 971 to 965 B.C. The key verse in the Song of Solomon is chapter 6, verse 3. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. Here, the Song of Solomon is a beautiful poetry inspired by the Holy Spirit, which speaks of a story of love between Solomon and a Shulamite woman, also speaking of Christ's love and the church, also speaking of God's love for the children of Israel. The book of Isaiah, written approximately 750 to 700 B.C., the book of Isaiah, key verse is chapter 53 and verse number 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The book of Isaiah speaks to judgments of the children of Israel and of nations in chapter 1 through 39. It speaks of comforts and salvation, restorations in chapters 40 through 66. The emphasis of Isaiah is on monotheistic teachings and away from idol worship where Isaiah's goal is to get the children of Israel to no longer believe in a multitude of gods like the heathen around them, but go back to the one true God. This is the teaching on the introduction to the Old Testament, part two. And on today, 
if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you have strayed away from his love and kindness, I invite you to bow your head, close your eyes, and pray with me this prayer, this prayer of salvation, this prayer of rededication. Won't you pray this prayer with me? Oh God, I am a sinner. I have strayed away from your love and kindness. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me today. Forgive me, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you for listening to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International. LCMI is a Christian non denominational teaching ministry based solely on the Holy Bible dedicated to pleasing God, glorifying Jesus Christ, and ensuring that the Bible is the foundation in everything this ministry proclaims and endorses. For more information, log on to our website at lifechangingministries.com. Please join us again next time for more Bible teaching. And remember, we have the victory through Jesus Christ.